Tom Brokaw covered John Glenn's historic return to space, interviewed him many times over the years, knew him well. Tom, good morning to you. Good morning. I, don't, I think there's a whole group of people in this country beneath a certain age who cannot even understand the guts, the courage it took to get in that capsule in 1962 and get on top of that rocket. I remember I was a senior in college. I looked for any excuse to skip class, and that day I remember when he lifted off and it was a defining moment in American life. If Norman Rockwell were to draw the quintessential American hero, it would have been John Glenn. And throughout his life, for all the acclaim, all the famous friends that he had, his personality was just like this. It was never about him. He was so modest. I was just with him two years ago when we rededicated the John Glenn College of Public Affairs at Ohio State. And what people didn't know, and he told me when I got there, he had uh, macular degeneration, so he was losing his eyesight. It was very hard for him. He'd been 20-20 until his 80s with his eyesight. You know, everybody remembers that movie, The Right Stuff, all about the, you know, the narrowing down the field for that Mercury 7 group. He didn't love the movie, didn't really love the way he was depicted in it, and also said, by the way, the process was dramatic enough without Hollywood intervening. Right. Well, he, he really liked Tom Wolfe's book. Mm -hmm. He didn't like the movie particularly. By the way, Tom Wolfe was a friend of mine, and, and we were at dinner uh, about three years before the book. I said, well, what are you working on? He said, I'm working on, you know, the original astronaut. I said to my wife, well, Tom's lost it. You know, there, what else could be written? And that is the defining book about it. Back uh, when he went back into space at the age of 77, we were all down there covering that. Try to capture the emotion of that launch. Well, it's just very hard to describe. Among other things, I called Ted Williams, who had been his wingman in Korea, and I said, would you come up and be our guest? And he was in a wheelchair at that time. Ted talked only at one decibel, which was way off the top. Yeah, by God, I'll be there. <laughs> no, and he couldn't wait to be there. And Ted didn't have a lot of heroes. John Glenn was his hero. He said that was the best fighter pilot I have ever seen. And real quickly, he succeeded at just about everything he did at life, but he did not succeed at winning the presidency when he ran. What was his impact on politics? Well, I, I think he didn't succeed as president because he would not play the larger role. He was always John Glenn, steady as she goes, pilot in the cockpit, not going to do anything dramatic to win it. He came from central Ohio. And it was just nat it was not a natural instinct for him to go out there and blow himself up. I said today to somebody, you know, John Glenn wouldn't do bombast on Twitter. He wouldn't have a multi-million dollar foundation. If you look at the current people that are going on, he was very comfortable being the small town boy. And we have to mention Annie. Yeah. They had side by side cribs and they were married for 74 years. Yeah, now. we're going to actually hear a part of an interview we did with John and Annie a little later in the show. Tom, thanks. Okay, great. I appreciate great. it. Always a pleasure. You. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.